Hello, Stitch People. Welcome to the Stitch People podcast. I'm Lizzie Bean, your host and the founder of Stitch People, where our goal with cross-stitching is to inspire your personal creativity, and our goal with podcasting is to help you make some new friends while you're at it. Today's episode is so great. I I just felt really uplifted after this conversation with Kate. Kate Anderson has been a stitch peopler, a stitch person uh, since almost the very beginning. Uh, She came to Stitch People, found it back in 2015. We had just released the DIY book, I believe in late 2014. And uh, we've sort of been on each other's radar ever since. She is a super smart, super innovative, super kind lady. She is living the full time parent life and she is fostering her creativity through her cross stitch and embroidery at large. She's really expanded and I think she's just such an inspiration. I hope you enjoy this episode as much as I enjoyed having this conversation. So without further ado, let's get talking with Kate. Okay, just a little further ado. I simply wanted to mention that we finished up our spring fling. It was May 12th, 13th, and 14th, and we had such a good time. We covered so much good information. The first class was about design tools at your disposal, resources that Stitch People offers to you for free to help you design your portraits. We also went over PC Stitch and you know digital design software options. The second day, we literally designed a portrait, talking about recreating fabrics and textures and designs. And then on the third day, we actually stitched the portrait, and there's a whole long bonus video stitching the rest of the portrait after the fact. So you can still buy tickets. If you didn't get to watch live, that's okay. We recorded all of the classes and they're still available. They'll be available forever and ever and ever. So go to link.stitchpeople.com slash springfling and check it out if you are interested in taking those classes. They are still available to you. So I just wanted to mention that so that you don't miss out. Now let's get on with the show. Where are you calling in from today, Kate? I'm in Washington. Washington. Yes. Uh, I live in Snoqualmie. Okay. Uh, so like 45 minutes out from Seattle. Oh, nice. Which direction? To, uh, uh, east. East. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Great. That's beautiful area. Washington's a lovely, lovely yes. state. I really like the weather up there. Do you get much it's very snow? Wet. <laughs> yeah. Is it very wintry? Um, I, I don't know. This will be our second winter here. Ooh. Um, and last year during winter, we were in Bellevue, which is sort of in between sure. Seattle and okay. Snoqualmie. Um, and there wasn't much snow. Oh. There was there was like one day of, of really heavy snowfall. And that was fun. Um, but that was enough. <laughs> right, right. Well, hopefully you escape it again. Uh, where you said you've been there for two years. Where did you come from? California. Okay. So um, we've moved around a lot. Uh, I, we first came from, uh, from Australia okay. to the States. We moved to, uh, San Diego. Okay. And Ooh, then lovely. we were in, then we were in Irvine mm. and then we were in Los Angeles and then we moved to Washington. So oh, we've great. done a lot. A and lot over like how many years span has that been? It's almost been six years since oh, we wow. moved Oh, wow. That the is States. a lot of moving in a yes. very short amount of time. What brought you to the States initially? Uh, my husband's work. Okay, okay. He, his, the company he was working for um, in Australia, they wanted to build up uh, like a presence in the States. Oh, nice. And so they brought like quite a lot of their employees over to San Diego, uh, but he got offered a position uh, at like his dream job, um, which is why we moved to Irvine in the hey, first place. Hey, that's yeah. exciting. So that dream was, that job. was great. That's a, that's a big, uh, that's a big term. Yes. That's pretty well, it, cool. It was, it was kind of one of those, he wanted to work there until he worked there sort of deals. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Um, but the, the experience and, and living, I loved living in Irvine. That, that was amazing. Oh, um, I love that. Irvine's beautiful. It is, yeah. Uh, but no, it was, we keep moving around because he keeps changing job, but now we've bought a house here. Hey, that's so this is our first permanent. house we've bought. <laughs> yes. So this is permanent. This is long haul and both of my kids are in school now. They're oh, both nice. school aged. So this is, this is the long haul. Love now. it. Okay. <laughs> so you're there for a, at least for a while, yes. you know, with no anticipation of things changing. That's, that's psychologically yes. very nice. It's hard to be in flux. Oh my it's so hard. It's Yeah. 
um, we've we've been renting since early 2005. Okay. And we've moved. I, I don't remember exactly. I, I counted ages ago, but it was like 12 times. Um, as we moved a lot. So the fact that we bought and yeah. um, the kids, like I said, the kids are in school. It's just like, uh, <sighs> that's a relief. Oh, good. And you get to nest. Like, I think yes. a lot of crafters and a lot of makers have this tendency to really make things your own. I mean, that's kind of the whole deal. And so especially in a living space, how fun to be able to let your creativity go, you know, as far as more than just paint colors, but, you know, furniture and fixtures and setting things up and yep. like really getting cozy because, you know, you're going to be there yes. a while. That's yeah. So well, nice. I mean, this is a, this area is a great example. I'm yeah. actually in uh, a, a larger room that's a playroom, but I have this tiny little corner. This is my space. Yes. And it's a mess because I'm a mess. Yeah, that's um, like, <laughs> no judgment. But, yeah, but it's like I can do what I want here yeah. and and I can change it when I want, not just, oh, we're going to move again, you know? Right, right. And you can just settle in and get it sorted. I love that. I love that. So uh, do, you, do you miss – it sounds like you really loved Irvine. Do you miss it? I do. Um, I didn't realize I liked – the the warmer climate mm. until we moved to Washington and that's probably because mm. it rains a lot here uh, and I'm not really a fan of the rain Ooh. unless I can stay inside yeah that's fine I love hearing it outside yes but um yeah I it's nice especially with with kids um just being able to be like okay we're gonna go outside and play right right a good um, a good plan b for any any day which is harder yes. when it's raining Mm -hmm. Unless you have really good rain boots, I guess. Go splash exactly, around. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Which, you know, can also be a plan B. But right now, I mean, I don't know if, you, if you've if you seen, because uh, I've posted about it on my Instagram. Yeah. I, I broke I broke my toe last oh, week. Oh, no. So right I now going out, that. going out in the rain is not really oh, that appealing Can I ask what me. happened? You can, and it's not really a great story. Oh, man. But I'm, I can tell you. <laughs> Um, so it was like 30 minutes before we went out to go trick-or-treating. Oh, no. Yeah. And I was setting up uh, like a barricade for our front door because we'd already had a couple of trick-or-treaters come mm. while we were getting dinner sorted. Um, and I'm like, oh, I've got a bright idea. We've got this big, gorgeous dining table mm. with a, a bench seat. I'm like, I'll put it on its side as a barricade so the dog won't run out the front door because ah. he kept wanting to see all the people. So... Me and all my intelligent thinking grabbed the bench, started to turn it on its side, and it slipped on the floor, Ooh. and it's kept going, and it's gone top straight down on my foot. Ouch. Yeah. Ouch, ouch. Did you have to go to the hospital right away? Yes. Oh. No, I didn't I didn't go right away um, because I really didn't want to – I didn't want to um, have my kids miss out on trick-or-treating. Right. And I stayed home. And hobbled to give candy to to people, uh, and then once the kids had gone to bed, I I trundled off to the hospital because oh. thankfully it's my left foot, so I can still drive. Aha! Uh -huh. I have an automatic. There you go. Yeah. Oh, that's a bummer. It's hard mm -hmm. when the holidays get overshadowed with things. I remember when I was a kid. Uh, we, there's a joke in my family: the night that the tooth fairy fought Santa Claus on the roof, because I remember I I had a habit of losing teeth on Christmas Day. <laughs> it happened like three years in a row, or on Christmas Eve rather, happened a yeah. bunch, and eh, it, that never bothered me. Luckily, but you know, a broken bone. Oh, that's just the worst. It's, I managed to bump it, <clears throat> like half an hour ago too oh, no. so yeah it's it's gone back to the throbbing pain again <laughs> yeah we'll just well, I'll get we'll just sit and chat and stay very still for the next yes. 40 minutes whatever yes. <laughs> oh I'm so sorry to hear it well hey at least uh cross stitching does not require a lot of standing up and moving around um, exactly correct me if I'm wrong are you primarily a stay-at-home mom taking care of the yes. kids taking care of the house and on the side you also do a, a, a heck of a lot of cross stitching I thought what you were going to bring up I know that you started like a floss tube channel and you're yes. getting kind of really um going and really integrated into kind of the cross stitch community at large tell us more about that I'm I'm trying trying yeah I I also stream once a week 
Cool. Um, is but that, I don't really post about that. On what platform? Is that on, on Twitch? On Twitch. Okay, yeah. okay, cool. Um, that's more, I stream mostly because it actually keeps me accountable mm. for one night of the week. I love that. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't let myself get distracted. Um, often I'll have like one or two people come and chat with me. Um, the night of the week before last, I had no viewers. Oh, no. I'm like, I don't care. I'm just going to watch Doctor Who. And Perfect. if anyone jumps on, they can watch me. I love that. Doctor Who was a go-to uh, stitch show for me for a while. <laughs> I was deep into doing portraits. I, this is I'm the first time I'm now, watching but... it. Ooh, where, where, uh, what season are you on? Uh, and the new stuff of okay. season four. Awesome. So um, David Tennant's Doctor Who. I love David Tennant. <laughs> I love him so much. I think he's so talented. He, and, he and he seems like a really just like genuinely nice person, which is he always does. refreshing. So Yes. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, the David Tennant Doctor Who. Those are fun, fun episodes. I, I think accountability is so important. What is it about... Um, what is it you do, do you find that distracts you the most, you know, that keeps you from stitching or keeps you from being accountable the most? My phone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh that I've just got like, it. I've got that it on. Just like daggered my heart with truth. Yeah. <laughs> I've, got, I've got it on silent yes. right now so that it does, because I've got a chat and everyone's online right now. So my phone just keeps going. Oh, <laughs> it's so, so easy So right now it's lost. not distracting me. <laughs> but um, no, I've I found that. Uh, so I, I have ADHD okay. and there's a thing um, that a lot of people with ADHD discover uh, ha, bleh, that they find useful. It's called body doubling. Hmm. So um, it's basically you, you have someone with you in a room or for me could be on the internet sure. basically. Um, but the fact that someone is there and could be watching you keeps you accountable ah. for what you're doing so they don't have to talk to you they don't have to interact with you they don't have to like do anything it's sure, just the it's presence just of someone there. yeah yeah helps with the productivity and I discovered inadvertently that streaming does that for me well hey there you go yeah. that's a really interesting kind of workaround I um I've been diagnosed with ADHD as well and I I haven't dug too much into learning about it because for me it's like I just, I only got the diagnosis a few years ago. And so it was like, well, I've lived my life this long. Like I cope how I cope. I am who I am. Like, I don't know. But the more I learn about it, uh, you know, it, it's it's been really helpful. I haven't heard of body doubling, but I can definitely relate with, I'm the kind of person where even if I'm perfectly capable of tackling something by myself on my own, it, it often does help just to have somebody else there. It's like yeah. a little ray of hope of like, oh, I'm not alone. Oh, they're doing something too. It makes me want to like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, there's like a camaraderie and like working on stuff at the same time that, that's yes. helpful. So yeah. that's great. I like that a lot. I had I had it and I, I actually also only got diagnosed earlier this year. Oh, hey. Um, so Adult I diagnosis. was also, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I, I realized like after the fact that I've been using it to my advantage without realizing it mm. because my husband and I used to share an office Okay, and I was a freelancer for a very long time. And so whenever he actually had like days off of work or was working from home, I was actually really productive those days. Interesting. So, yeah. Hmm. I, yeah. I thought that was interesting. That is interesting. I'm trying to think of like, what do I do that might, might be... So, you know, something that's actually like clinically useful that I don't know that I do. I don't know. It's a whole <laughs> world. I tell you what, it's, it's funny. I had this uh, realization this morning. I was in the shower and thinking through everything I had to do today. And I was thinking of making, <laughs> and this is like, aha, like sometimes I'll have these little tip offs of like, oh yes, that, that is an accurate diagnosis because I was thinking about making a to-do list of all of the to-do lists I want to make. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh, that's it. Because like, I want to make like my little health and wellness to do list. And I want to mm -hmm. make my daily mm -hmm. like stitch people tasks to do list. And I want to make my to do list for the house projects that I have waiting. And, and it's like, but I but then I lose track of all the lists that I want to make. So I was like, oh, I should probably make a list of the lists that I need mm -hmm. to make. <laughs> Go down so, that rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Just like the way we keep ourselves organized. I've got post-it notes all over my desk. Oh my god. And reminders <laughs> and oh man, just trying to keep it. It's have, but you know I have a friend uh, who's a therapist <laughs> and he calls it a superpower um, okay. because when you're the the 
uh, silver lining of ADHD is when you really care about something or when something's really of interest to you, it's very easy to hyper focus and get yes. really into it and do it really well and be really mm-hmm. thorough and really excited and like not drained. And so it's like if you can find Have you found that to be true when when you are interested in stuff? Where's that shown up for you? I'm curious. With with cross-stitching. Yes. Same. um, And and embroidery Mm -hmm. in general. So just needlepoint in general. Yeah, Yeah, I Uh, see a beautiful – for those listening who can't see the Zoom, I see like a beautiful – the like purpley yellow floral is catching my (laughs) eye behind you. This big, beautiful embroidered floral. Yeah. Yeah. So that one was a stitch along that I did. Oh, fun. I love that. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I can easily just tune out the world yeah. if I get, if I let myself and my kids will be like, mom, <laughs> like right <laughs> in my face. Oh, I'm here. I'm here. I'm back. <laughs> oh yeah. It, it but, uh, can. My, my work as well before, before oh, yeah, I came what did a, you do? became a parent. So I, I don't work at the moment because I don't have a working visa. Um, I'm on a dependent visa oh, at okay. the moment to be in the States. Uh, but so in my, my previous life, I like to say, yes. uh, I was a web designer and developer. Aha. Very so cool. I could easily just dive into code and just spend hours building the design that I'd spend hours designing. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, tell me, tell me more. Were you mostly on the front end with like... Um, I don't know, HTML, CSS, like design of a thing where you were doing back-end coding? So I'm a, I'm a front-end developer. Okay, okay. So I, I do, I, I make the design that someone would give me or I would make cool. and replicate it into code. Oh, interesting. So you'd work like the graphic designer would say like, we want this to be what the homepage looks like. And you could take that and make it a functional web page, make all the buttons click to where they need to go, make all yeah. the tabs open up. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, but all like the systems and, and servers and all that, I'm just like, that doesn't, <laughs> I don't get that. That's what Spencer does. And it blows my mind. He'll talk and I'm like, okay, have fun. <laughs> like, I don't know. Because I used to do, I worked at a, a tech startup doing graphic design it was a survey company. And so what, what I would do is really low key. Um, I became, I was a whiz at CSS and HTML for a while. I couldn't I don't have to like really brush it up if I needed to use it now, but <laughs> it would be something where like, say, I don't know, ABC company contracted with us. Then I would take like ABC logo and all of ABC's fonts and colors and like slap it onto the surveys so that it all integrated with their stuff. And it mm-hmm. was always fun, you know, just something new, but uh, but yeah, easy to easy easy to focus in and like zone into it. Spencer gets that same way too, and he he'll come out after hours and be like, "I don't think I took any breaks." <laughs> yeah, I need to go to the toilet yeah, now. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> do you miss it? Do you miss being uh, being a developer? I do. I feel very out of the loop now, though, mm. because the 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 just the the internet evolve so quickly so quickly um, trends and, and, and ha- technology yeah, and html and css especially uh grow and change and develop so quickly and yeah. it's been uh six and a half years for me now oh. almost so i'm like ancient news oh. <laughs> is but, that something you, know, you ever anticipate getting into again or are you just kind of focused on on the mom life and on the stitching and and all that for now and Kind of what comes will come. I know enough to get by to do my own stuff. Sure. So at the moment, if if I could um, do like freelancing again, it would be stitchy related. Yeah. I love that. So uh, which leads us into tell us a little bit more about what you do by way of stitching. So you do like floss tube videos and you do some streaming, um, but you also do, from what I understand, like a lot of commissions and you develop a lot of fonts and sell those on Etsy or alphabets, depending on what you want to call them. Uh, Mm -hmm. And you've, you know, been a guest presenter for us about that very thing, you know, making, making text your own kind of and figuring out how to do lettering and all that. I know. Like a, a couple of days off a year ago now. So crazy. Time <laughs> flies. It feels like I last just realized. Week. So crazy. Um, so that was for our holiday event a year ago. Yeah. Um, so back back in 2020. My goodness. So yeah. yeah, tell us a little bit about what your kind of current pursuits are by way of stitching. Um, a lot of stuff, like you listed. 
Uh, I haven't done any fonts in ages. I've I've kind of been like stuck on oh, no. ideas. Oh, um, I see. The last font I drought. released, <laughs> yeah, the last font I did was back in January. Eh. Um, but nobody's okay. counting but you. Yeah, and you. <laughs> yeah. If um, how many do you have? Do you know off the top of your head? Ten. Yeah, it's or eleven. It's or so. surprisingly difficult because of um, just kind of the constraints of cross stitching and at yeah. large. Um, it, it's difficult to come up with variables and varieties. And yeah, and stuff that's not been done already. Exactly, because well. <laughs> there's, I mean, there's only so many ways to make the letter A, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, I, ten's pretty robust. I think that's yeah. pretty great. Two of mine uh, are very. I like to call them advanced mm. fonts where they, they poke through the fabric and outside ah, yes. of the, the regular holes. And yep. So so I have kind of branched out of the uh, the, the regular, yeah, cross-stitch holes. Right, right. Um, and I have considered doing, because I've had a couple of people ask with this piece here if I sell this font. I'm oh, like, gorgeous. What does it important. say? It's a, there's a hoop with like, it just says, wild it just flowers. says breathe, breathe. Oh, that's nice. And yeah. like a nice cursive. That's really pretty. Yeah. So I, I actually know calligraphy as well. Hand what? calligraphy. That's um, a great skill. I love that. Well, that's kind of where the font thing started from. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I took like a, a free online class of, uh, it's called show us your drills. Ooh. Um, and it's basically like practicing all the separate uh, elements that each letter creates. And then once you have practiced all those and you're happy with them, then you actually turn all those shapes into each letter. Oh, wow. And then from there, you know, you create your own style and, and all of that kind of thing. But that was where that came from. And people keep asking, have you got that as a font? And I'm like, Maybe I should try embroidery fonts. Maybe. Because embroidery fonts are basically just traced, right? Yeah. You just sort of trace yeah. them onto the paper so they don't have the constraints of, like you mentioned, the holes of the Ada fabric that kind of limit you to certain angles, you know, straight lines and 45 degree angles and maybe some other angles. And, or if, if you want to get bigger. Yeah. If you want to go bigger with letters, mm -hmm. then you can get a little bit curvier. Right, and, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I, I, I went on a tangent. I do that a lot. Same. tangents. So I have fonts. I've been doing stitch alongs. So cool. Um, so are you, you're designing I've, your own? Yes. Very so cool. So that, that is one of my stitch alongs. That was Love a free it. one that I had. Love it. Uh, that's the last one I've done. They're a little bit more hard work than I anticipated. Yeah. So I'm taking a bit of a break. I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah. Fonts, stitch alongs, uh, embroidery, which is mostly just my stitch alongs at the moment. Sure, sure. Um, stitch people orders. I've been doing ornaments a lot nice. the last like two months. Good. Um, I'm proud of people for getting ahead of their, <laughs> ahead of their Christmas yes. orders. <laughs> um, the this is the first year I'm doing ornaments and oh, I nice. really like them. They're very cute. Yes. And very, and, very and fun. More doable, a little less pressure than like giant full family portraits all the time. So I disagree with yeah? that. Yeah. Okay, tell me more. Um, I found it really hard to stay in the small sizes. Oh, I see. Uh, while also incorporating decorations. Oh, okay. So you're you're uh, doing like I, I'm just picturing like you know little simple like a bust of a person or something like mm. that. So you're adding more detail, some like more decorations yes. and background elements. And okay, that's very cool. I have one finished one, so I can Ooh. show you. Okay. Oh, I love that. Okay, so is that a four inch? That's I'm a just four inch. Describe yeah. it. We've got like a mom and a dad, and then the family name, three little kids, and a dog inside the date at the bottom, and then like a. Uh, piney fronds you know on on either side that is yeah. so cute I love all the hair yes such so cute, I, cute I was styles super happy with mom, with mom's hair on this one that's um, very cool but I found that so hard to keep that within four inches mm. um, and that's six characters like that's, that's a lot. lot yeah uh but I don't know I just I don't hate it it's nice um, challenge. Yeah, I, I'm something all different. for a challenge. Yeah. But th I, I just thought it would be a bit easier. <laughs> Interesting. So do you think you'll offer them next year in your shop? I think so. Okay. I think I'll, I'll up my prices a bit uh -huh. though. Ah, yep. Uh, and maybe limit like the character number. <laughs> like max, no, I'm, max six people. I'm not adverse to doing as many as 
how many people have in their family. Sure, sure. Um, but more like I have an, a better understanding and a better idea of how many could fit in each hoop size. Oh, I see. Yeah, because you can adjust the hoop size or even layer yeah. people if you had to, I guess. Yeah. You can make yeah. adjustments for it. Yes. I, I, I have I hear one I am like that... throwing the baby out with the bathwater. <laughs> <laughs> I have one that's going to be in a five-inch hoop, but that's um, for my grandpa. So. Oh. How many people? Uh, six, but they're yes. all adults. Okay, okay. Taking up a little more room. and Yes. And if it's grandpa, I'm assuming you're going all out with, you know, the skills and the – Yes. Extra yes. details. That's nice. Do yeah. you, are you making very many other handmade gifts this year, uh, like for personal gifts for yourself or people, friends, family? Not for me. Uh, all of the, not all of the ornaments. I'm making ornaments for family. Oh, okay. So that's like my, my gift. Nice. I have some, some orders as well for ornaments. Great. Uh, but other than that, I'm not making any other gifts. I did... I did stuff for my kids two years ago and they were a bit too young to appreciate it. And I think they're still <laughs> a bit too young right now to appreciate it. Uh, and I think my husband's probably sick of seeing cross stitch all over the house. So <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> if it's, unless it's like Pokemon or Mario related, he's kind of like, yeah, it's nice. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Uh, Spencer and I have some friends that we play Mario Kart with on the regular um, so I, I appreciate the Mario, the Mario <laughs> love. Um, I can't remember if it was you or somebody we were joking with once upon a time a while back about how we need, uh, they were saying that Spencer needs to start like a support group for husbands of women who cross stitch <laughs> because of just what you said, like there's cross stitch stuff all over the house. They're always yeah. stitching instead of just like <laughs> sitting and watching a movie together. There's, you know, projects yeah, you out. You can't just sit and watch a movie. Right. You got to sit not? and stitch because exactly. otherwise you're just wasting your time. <laughs> exactly. That's what I say. Or the, uh, the hey, honey, while you're out, could you swing by Joanne's or Michael's and pick oh, up? Oh, no, I'd rather go there. <laughs> yes, I'd rather see, go. I'm the same, but I've heard a lot of people will send their husbands on errands and I think that's funny. Spencer would, I think, but I, I don't know. So do you have any other hobbies or interests or any other crafts that you do besides embroidery and cross-stitching? parent <laughs> <laughs> fair touche <laughs> no my my oldest is um special needs okay so uh she is I mean both my kids are a handful um but she has like a lot of therapies hmm. and um just you know, extra stuff that she yeah. needs to attend outside of school so I have my hands full with them yeah I get my stitching in when I can I used to crochet okay uh, I haven't for a very long time. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'm That's pretty boring. That's all right. <laughs> you know, thing, things ebb and flow. There's no judgment. I always just like to, you know, suss out what everybody's like, interested in. I feel like all the different cross-stitching things are a lot of different hobbies. That's so true. Like. That is absolutely true. Because there's true. the stitch people. There's I do my own patterns. Um, I stitch my patterns. I have two test stitches now, which is really cool. Oh, nice. Um. I just need more time to to make patterns. <laughs> yeah, it ta the test stitching is a lot. That's mm -hmm. that's the you know the plight of a cross stitch designer is if people like your designs, they go oh make more designs and can you take photos of them so I can see what it's going to look like when it's done. And it's like well you kind of can't have both because <laughs> either yeah. I'm spending my time <laughs> designing new patterns or I'm spending my time stitching because as and we I have noticed oh go that ahead people I have noticed that people will. Uh, get a pattern much more frequently if it's been stitched yep. before. Yeah, so they can one kind of, of those, see. The digital, mm -hmm. Yeah, not one of those digital pretend yeah. patterns. Um, even though I can produce those, but yeah, they just aren't quite the same. When people no, see, not. you know, exactly what they're going to get at the end, it's a little easier. Excuse me, it's a little easier to uh, to to take the leap I guess but unfortunately it means that people especially on Etsy think that the listing is the finished piece oh I've had that a lot Ooh. where they they think that they're paying five dollars for a finished cross stitch I'm no. like <clears throat> <clears throat> no 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 how about you spend 10 to 20 hours of your time producing something and charge five dollars for plus, it plus shipping yeah right you know? plus shipping plus materials <laughs> 
plus plus the overhead fees of running the Etsy shop and paying for your internet bill every month. Mm -hmm. What has been design software? Right, exactly. Everything, yeah. What has been the most surprising thing to you as you've gotten more into designing your own patterns and designing your own fonts? And like you said, you've got you're kind of starting to build your own little team. Are there obstacles that you've run into that you haven't anticipated as you've sort of started to build your own hmm. uh, brand, I guess? The time investment, I think. Mm. So what we were just just talking yeah. about. The fact that it does take a lot of time. And I mean, I guess I knew because I've been cross-stitching for ages. Sure. Um, I knew that it took a long time, but trying to take on commissions as well as do my own patterns, um, as well as uh, try to trial stitch-alongs. Mm. Um, I have a lot of works in progress all yeah. the time, which I don't mind. Right. Because they're all different stages and sometimes I just want to do some basic cross-stitch and sometimes I want to do some detailing and sometimes blah, blah, blah. Sure. Um, Got but, all the options. <laughs> yeah. But it does mean that I can go a long time without a finished product. Oof. That uh, could be which hard. Is, yeah, which is it sort of takes the wind out of you yeah. a little bit. A little yeah. less satisfying. Mm-hmm. To just kind of but have then a lot you, waiting. <laughs> yeah, then once you like, you get to all of them and to the end point, you're like, yes, right. I got lots of things to post on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yes, that's one thing that really surprised me as we started to grow Stitch People was it seems like you'll have a lot to post about on social media. And then you quickly find that you don't for exactly the reason you said, because things take the time they take and you just make kind of incremental progress on this, that or the other. And it's like not really photo worthy, the amount of progress you've put in. And so sometimes it is hard to like, geez, what do I post today? I don't have any Mm -hmm. new photos. I don't have any new content. I've been designing patterns, but none are done. It can be tricky. The last week I've been like, I don't have any photos in my camera reel to right. put on the internet. So you mentioned you've been cross-stitching for a long time. Tell mm-hmm. me how long, when did you pick up cross-stitching? How did you learn? So my mum taught me when I was about eight. Love it. Uh, That's a great I, age to learn it. Yes. I'm I'm really hoping that I can, uh, that my kids will show some interest. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't think my oldest will. She doesn't really have the fine motor skills to mm. do it. Um, but she does love like looking at my finished products. So I'll oh, take nice. what I can get. But my, my youngest has been doing like the stitch. I think I posted one on the group, the Facebook group one time of, uh, I set up a hoop for her. So like, you know, she'll have the hoop and she'll just be like, stab, pull, stab, pull. And she'll just do like, oh, fun, just like little abstract. abstract. Yeah, yeah. A little abstract piece. She's got like 10 of them now. Um, so I'm, I'm easing her in. <laughs> I love that. But uh, I did that. Yeah, I learned when I was about eight. And then my mom and I learned Brazilian embroidery, Ooh. which is basically just 3D embroidery. It was just back then it was called that. Say, say that um, again. It's basically just Brazilian. What? Brazilian embroidery. Mm-hmm. It's basically 3D embroidery. Oh, 3D. Whoa. Whoa. So you, so you build up. No, well, you, it's like like the florals that you do. Oh, 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 I see. So, you Just know, like way that lazy daisies and a cast kind on. Of, yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 I see. Very cool. Um, and so I learned that with my mum when I was about 14. Oh, nice. Uh, and then I, because I was too cool, I was a teenager <laughs> of then. Course. So I stopped. Got to gotta listen to CDs and, and have crushes on yeah. boys. <laughs> <laughs> boys are too, too important. I mean, I met my husband when I was 16. So like, you know, I was way too busy. <laughs> I love it. I love that. Um, but I I stopped for a long time and then I actually found, I got an ad for Stitch People. Ha ha! We found uh, you. <laughs> yes. In early 2015 oh wow I that's assume, early on I assume it was like pretty much when you guys released the book yeah I bought the book in August 2015 cool yeah we I, mean, I think we released it fall 2014 so that's like right right there mm-hmm. when we started cool that's great I didn't I didn't actually know I knew it was like early 2015 that you guys well, yeah at least I mean that, that like you, that's within six months I think of us nice. kind of getting going so that's very cool 
an uh, I don't remember adopter. what platform. Yeah, I don't remember <laughs> what platform. I assume Pinterest because yeah. I was using Pinterest a lot back then. Yeah, yeah, uh, a lot. Of, that's we saw a lot of people uh, interact with us on Pinterest early on for sure. Yeah, yeah, could have been. Uh, and I was, and that was the year that we were. Um, we knew, no, we didn't know by then. We were in talks then of moving to America. Oh, okay. so we were wanting to save money. Um, and I'm like, Hey, I know that my mom does a lot of stitching. Hmm. I'll ask if she's willing to give me some of her stash. Uh-huh. Like I knew she had a lot because she uh, inherited my grandma's, her oh. mom's. Um, and so she had like a double stash. Oh yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, I reached out and I'm like, Hey, can you help me out? Uh, because a floss in Australia is like three times as much as it is in America. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, I know that a lot of Australians actually get their floss through um, like wholesale stockists online. They don't oh, go to in-store places unless you like in a pinch. But Sure. Well, yeah. I mean, that's a significant price difference. I don't blame mm-hmm. them for figuring out a workaround. That's pretty brilliant. Yeah. Wow. Um, so, yeah, I got I got a little box. I got like, you know – I actually saw a picture like six years ago of one of these boxes. That was oh, my yeah. whole stash. Just like one little bobbin box. One box. Now yeah. I have six. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I, I made presents for all of my family for Christmas that year. Oh, lovely. So yeah, we were saving money. Like yeah, said, that's perfect. We the great way to do it. Awesome. So you've been doing, so kind of a lifelong cross-stitcher, I, that's, which is a, it's not an uncommon story, you know, that, Hmm. I mean, the eighties and nineties cross stitching was kind of a thing. And a lot of people had grandmothers doing it or mothers doing it and and taught them when they were young and then dropped it for myriad reasons and then picked it back up. And, and so you've been kind of stitching ever since, since around 2015. That's very cool. And when did it, uh, when did it inspire you? When were you inspired? I guess is the way to phrase that to, uh, start doing commissions and to start kind of going more that so, direction, making your own things, all of that. I've, I've talked about this on my Instagram because it actually is um, mental health related. Oh, nice. Um, okay. My second uh, child was really hard. Mm. She had colic for seven months um, as well as my oldest who they're two years almost exactly to the day apart. So my oldest was two when she, her younger sister was born. She oh, wasn't that, and walking. That's a tricky age, just even on its own. Yeah. yeah, she wasn't walking. Still, she wasn't talking. Um, she, we knew that there was something wrong. Mm. No one understood what was going on. Oh, but that's so, so hard. I was dealing with a toddler with special yeah. needs and a baby that wouldn't stop screaming. Oh. So for the first, for I want to go back from, in time and just like give you a big hug. <laughs> I know, <laughs> right? So <laughs> um, yeah. So from June 2016 to 20, to June 2017. I was in a really, really dark place Mm. and I had finally started seeing a therapist when my youngest was, had just turned one and he suggested that I find a hobby Mm. that I can engross myself in. Yeah. Um, And I don't remember what spurred it on exactly, but I was like, I like cross-stitching. It's designing. It's something with my hands. It's not digital. Mm-hmm. Um, I will give that a try again. And I decided as my project to stitch my own family oh, from nice. um, each year, the way we looked or were in December of the end of that year from okay. 2012 onwards. And I've got them. I have them. They're, they're in our stairwell. That. I love them. And have you continued to do them every year since? I have. I've still got, I've got two, I've got 2019 and 2020 that need like one final touch. Oh, I love Um, that though. It's like a nice little um, time capsule. Yes. And like each year is very cool because like there's always something changing. Yeah. Uh, But haircuts and getting taller and favorite outfits and facial Animals. hair, you know, for the, for the men in the family or and, what, and we whatever. Got pets and, yeah, and I was pregnant and, and, and yeah. Um, but no, is that kind of was like, I really liked doing this. 
I want to keep doing this. And there's only so many years that I can do with my own right, family. Right. So, so I'm in a, an amazing online mother's group of kids that are the same age as my oldest. Oh, nice. So I reached out and I'm like, hey, I want to make five of your families. Like I limited myself. Good idea. So like, that is such I'm a like, pro tip for anyone who hasn't branched out yet. <laughs> yes. Start small, limit yourself. Don't bite yeah. off more than you can chew. Don't say, hey, 100 people, I'll do all right. of your Who family. wants one? The doors are open. <laughs> so I did like, I punched everyone that commented back name into like a random generator, I picked out five. And so I did them and I used my family and those five as like my examples yeah to open my shop with oh that's great yeah and has it been very difficult to continue to get commissions since yes but that's just because I don't really try Mm. because I've got so much other stuff going on I've got fonts and I've just started taking on pattern commissions so um i done an RV for another stitch people person that I know online um, because she has a stitch people order, but obviously I can't do the people. Um, right. but, but she but didn't want to do the like RV. The, yeah. The background yeah. elements or the accessories or, you know, things that are, especially something like a specific car or specific RV, like that mm. can be totally time consuming and very so, tricky. Like, I, did, I did that recently. That's great. I'm doing a house pattern for someone. Cool. Um, like I've, I've been doing patterns lately and embroidery and yeah. So I've, I've keep, I'm like, busy enough yeah that so you don't you're not like relying on the commissions to keep you engaged that's great and and all of it is uh like I as I've said I don't have a working visa so if I earn too much it would be a problem oh interesting okay um and we we're fine like on my husband's that's great that's that's lovely so so for me it's it's all about my mental health yeah and if it gets, it starts getting too much, like I have too many orders, I'm just like, okay, I'm stop. I love that. That gives you the, <laughs> because you're not relying on it necessarily as a source of income or something, you do have that flexibility of just letting it be exactly what you need and want it to be, which mm-hmm. is so, that's ideal, right? Like it that's is, the right? Dream. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, so it I was the that. right choice back when my therapist was like, hey, yeah. think of something to do. And, um, and now I have a new therapist, like, because he was back in California. Oh, I, can't, yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't see him obviously because right. I'm in a different state. Um, and so like every time I see her, I'm like, look what I've been working on. And <laughs> I love that. I love it. Well, and it's, it's, uh, there's something to that. I've been doing a lot of research lately. Well, research is a loose term reading, I guess, <laughs> about just kind of hand making in general. And um, it started with, I read through The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron this summer. And uh, I just have, I've become really fascinated by like humanity's sort of um, universal spark to want to create something. Like mm-hmm. kids love to draw and and make things from shapes and build castles in the sand out of nothing. Like, and, and that's a very inherent uh, human drive. I think it's very fascinating that we want to, um, you know, have paintings that will outlive us and create things that will be handed down. And, uh, and I love that uh, that there is research that shows that people who make things, people who have a craft or a hobby, who are actively creative, have generally like, you know, they've polled hundreds of thousands of people or whatever, and have like a higher quality of life and a higher satisfaction and are like oh, more easily cool. pleased and happy because it there it, it, it's like you said, you love to show somebody like, look what I did. Or yeah, when yeah. you finish a project, it's like, ha, ah, like you just feel so proud of yourself. It's it's nice to finish a project. It's good for your self-worth. It feels good. There's like, you know, chemical dopamine. It's, mm-hmm. just, it's nice. It's good. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I like to say follow the dopamine. Yes. Right? <laughs> oh, I like that. That's a good life motto. I love that a lot. Wonderful. Okay, well, we are getting to the end. I'm curious. You, you have such an interesting background kind of professionally for that's that's uh can be very technical and you have 
such uh, responsibilities, you know, to your children and your family, which I'm sure relies on a lot of like left brain schedules, organizing, getting people to their appointments and like keeping the house clean, getting dinner on the table, you know, just making Mm -hmm. sure everybody's surviving alive and happy and thriving. So Um, that all the things that need to be done aren't noticed. Yes. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Yes. Isn't that, (laughs) that's why they call it, what is it? Motherhood is a thankless job, right? You know? Yes. Oh my goodness. Well, they will and someday. They will thank you. Um, yes. And that's and thus is the the circle of exactly. life. As I get to be an adult, the more I'm like, oh my gosh, everything my parents did for me when they uh-huh. were this age, and I'm like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's just thank you, mom and dad. If and you don't listening. even have kids, do you? Right? Like- no, not yet. And and I, yeah, it's just mere like adult functioning in the world. I mm-hmm. I look at you know peers like you who who do have children and have. I mean, I'm I feel like I'm maxed out as it is. Let alone you know to say nothing of adding additional human beings that we would need to care for. (laughs) Like, I don't know how you do it. And I'm sure. I don't know how I do it either. I'll just point that out. (laughs) All my friends with kids say like, there's a reason they start as newborns and that like you grow as they grow, you know, that you're not just like diving into the deep end of six kids and everybody's got their own blah, 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 you know. I know know that you're wrapping up, but like that Eh. reminds me, like, I don't know how people, um, foster and adopt kids oh, because right. like the baby because you, you like you said you ease into it mm-hmm. when they're an infant but having a kid that like isn't a brand new baby right. and they've already been imprinted and they've already had experiences that just pff, that uh, blows right. my mind I, yes <laughs> kudos to all of you out there exactly who have done that because wow yeah it's a lot so with I mean with all of these swirling facets of what make you you uh one of my favorite questions to ask people is what does the word success mean to you or what does success in life mean to you Mm. I know it's like very big it's a very big question yeah um making sure that what you do brings you joy Mm. And I find that very hard to do. And I know that that's because I I suffer with depression Mm -hmm. and anxiety on a daily basis. So not every day feels successful. Sure. But as long as I'm still trying um, to to make sure that I do find something that I enjoy. And sometimes that just could be watching my kids play nicely together for yeah. the first time in ages. <laughs> um, Simple things, right? Then, yeah, exactly. Then I feel like that is success. Yeah. So what? Uh, finding the joy, but is kind of like what you said. Follow the dopamine, right? Yes. <laughs> like just finding pockets in every day to appreciate and never giving up and always trying. I, I uh, definitely relate. I, I have struggled on the depression and anxiety trains myself and um it it's a nice reminder to 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 remember that not like not every day has to be a good one I think we trick ourselves into thinking like oh I have failed because I had this bad day but it's like no it just was a bad day I did yeah that you know something earlier today that's like a bad day was only 24 hours Mm -hmm. that's it yeah you're not gonna you know you're not gonna nail everything every time and that's Mm -hmm. okay you know yeah and and, so, and there doesn't have to be any judgment about that. I think that's the best the thing that I'm learning these days, you know, and with 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 my therapist is just to become a little more um and I feel like you've tapped into this a little bit, but just to be a little bit more observant and a little less judgmental about like, oh, it's it's just 24 hours or you know, my kids are playing nice for the <laughs> first time in a while and, and just <laughs> noticing and observing and and withholding any sort of especially self-judgment that like well, oh, yeah. I am That's bad hard. because, or I am good because, but it's just like, no, it just is, you know? Yeah. Just that one's hard. Yeah. To, really to hard. not just, not just focus on the bad stuff that happens, but look and search for those small victories and those small joys. Yeah. Yeah. Being, being yeah. an advocate for yourself, being your own ally, yes. you know, it, cause it always feels good when somebody says like, like, no, like what I will say to you, honestly, is like, Kate, you've got a full plate and you are handling it so well. Like, I, I am you. so impressed. And I'm sure everybody listening to this podcast is going to be like, oh, my gosh, that's she is amazing. She's a superwoman. Uh, and, and it's nice to hear that from other people. But like we, do, we do also get to you can tell that to yourself at the end of the day, too. You it, know, yes, and it doesn't some, feel as 
as uh like it feels like I'm just trying to psych myself up right, like right I'm I struggle kidding with myself the same. yeah but when other people say it it does definitely help and, true. and the pandemic did not help with that oh I bet yeah. I bet it's not so, being able to see people yeah so isolating mm-hmm. but like you said I think it's really interesting too you've been able to tap into online communities you've got your mom's yes. group you've we've got stitch people community and you're starting kind of your own community around your streaming and um and your designs and people who are following you for what you do uh it, that's really really cool and i think it's important to you know it's easy to say you know our ah, technology and shake our fists <laughs> at the, the ills of social media and what it's doing to our world and there are many but to say, okay, well, how can we, what, what's the good we can grow out of this? You yes. know, with a, a little light and a little nutrition, what can we foster yeah, well, out of something? I mean, without the internet, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. Yeah. Same. So, yeah. Same. I, I often I, joke with Spencer that like, if the electricity went out or if we lost the internet for whatever reason, like I would have nothing to show for my life. <laughs> like, I, you know, I know exactly what you stitch mean. Stitch people, it's a shop that exists online. I don't have a brick and mortar I can go to mm-hmm. and be like, look, behold, stitch people, the, the shop, you can enter and touch things with your hands. Like, <laughs> nope, it's all online. And yep. if, it, if the online went away, poof, there goes everything. Mm-hmm. I know exactly <laughs> I what you mean. Happen. Yeah, don't let that happen. <laughs> no, no, no. But, uh, and like, I mean, the flip side of that is what's interesting too about um, your uh particular journey with with crafting and, and cross stitching in general well stitching of all kinds is like you said it it wasn't online it wasn't digital it is something you make with your hands but mm-hmm. you know the community sometimes and the you know shopping interaction is all online so yes <sighs> it's a whole yeah thing. no I'd be able to like go out on the street and say look at what I made and like just <laughs> yell it to people yeah. but they'd probably think I was crazy like, so the internet is you, definitely lady. Yeah, exactly. The internet has has definitely been an enabler at, yeah, at me continuing to create things. Yes. Totally. I love that. I love that a lot. Wonderful. Well, in our last few minutes here, I would love to do a little rapid fire round. I'm going to pull yep. up my cheat sheet of fun questions and we'll start with, do you have a favorite color? Blue. Do you have uh-huh, a f- blue? <laughs> oh, there you go. Do you have a favorite um off the top of your head? I know people who do more stitching than others. Do you have a favorite DMC floss color? It's also blue. It's 3750. 3750. And we'll have to check it out. It's what like kind a, of blue? It's like a navy, not a, not a bright blue, but it's, it's. I use it a lot for denims. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, I know. Sometimes there are just per- particular hues that just like speak to you and it's like, ah, this floss. I love this mm-hmm. floss. <laughs> um, have you ever, um, have you ever met anyone that you uh, were starstruck by? Like, have you ever met any celebrities or anything like that? Like any famous people, especially living in California. No. Drat. That's okay. Sorry. <laughs> Me neither, really. I was always yeah. on the lookout whenever I was up in LA, like looking at restaurants and stuff. I never ran. Yeah, I was when we were in LA, I looked as well, but I never saw anyone. Mm-hmm. We were mo- we were close to Santa Monica, so oh, okay, not really okay. yeah, not really LA, know. LA. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite book? No, I don't read as much as I should. So that's no. all right. Or a favorite, uh, a favorite story, favorite like fairy tale or children's story or anything like that. I, I do like the Harry Potter series. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah, I me need too. to reread so nostalgic. those. It's Spencer been did it such recently. A long time. He said they hold up. So that's good. See. Okay. Do you have a favorite flower? Uh, blood red roses, Ooh. which is so expensive. It's <laughs> so romantic. Yes, but I don't like them because they're romantic. I just really like how they look. Yeah, they're gorgeous, and they, I love the smell of roses, like a fragrant yes. rose. There's nothing like it. Do that have- or forget me nots. Oh, oh, little blue, blue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favorite flower to stitch? Um, I actually did tiny forget me nots in one oh. of my pieces. What stitch did you use for them? Um, I used a bullion stitch and a French oh, nice. knot in the middle. Fun. Oh, yep. interesting. So that were the Boolean stitches, the petals? Yeah. So they, I did them really close together. So they sat up. Oh, oh, it made like a little loop. Yep. Very cool. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Do you have any, um, do you have a favorite animal? Probably cats Oh, because they're so sassy. Yeah. They're so independent. <laughs> we have okay. two cats. So. Two, oh, what are their names? Milo and Zoe. Milo and Zoe. Those are great names. Thank you. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay. And last but not least, 
I'll ask, oh, what should it be? What should it be? Oh, do you have a favorite uh, trip you've ever taken and or travel destination? Um, we went back to Australia in 2019. Oh. So that was probably my favorite trip because yeah. we get to go see family. And you got to take um, your kids? Yes. Oh. So it was it was my youngest first time to Australia because she was born in the States. I love that. Um, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be able to go again like next year. Oh, that'd, that'd be, be great. great. Yeah. Oh, I will cross all my fingers and limbs for you to be able Thank to go, you. go visit family. <laughs> what a relief and joy that will be. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, Kate, it has been such a pleasure chatting with you today. Thank you so much Thank for you. taking the time. Is there anything else you want to say before we sign off? Thank you for having me. Oh, well, you're welcome. Um, and yeah, check out my shop. <laughs> okay, we will. And we'll make sure to tag you and everything so everybody can find you and awesome. connect with you and check out your yes. cool fonts. Kate, just amazing. I, I'm I'm truly in awe of everything she does, everything she is, everything she's up against, and how, you know, she she expressed some vulnerabilities here in this episode. But honestly, from the outside looking in, she seems like one of these people who just truly has a handle on it. It's it's so interesting, you know, how we come across to the world and and maybe what the true story is underneath. And I think she really navigates everything with such grace and joy. Like she said, follow the joy. So thank you so much for listening to today's episode of the Stitch People podcast and enjoying these conversations with Stitch People like you. I would so appreciate if you could take a minute to subscribe to the podcast wherever it is you're listening and leave us a rating and review. It'll really help us overall with the algorithms and everything, but most of all, it will help us shine all the cross-stitchy sunshine into the world. You can check out everything Stitch People has to offer, cross-stitch patterns, books, merch, and more at Stitch People com and please please connect with us on facebook instagram and pinterest we'd love to see all your crafty works in progress give you a big old digital high five lastly i want to thank all of you in the stitch people community for your support of us and more importantly most importantly your positive and cooperative encouragement of one another it is such a beautiful thing to see how everybody just wants to help and uplift one another on the stitch people community so thank you so much i'd also like to thank the incredible stitch people team for making all the magic happen behind the scenes. Our fully licensed jazzy tunes were created by Jonathan Boyle and our sound designer extraordinaire is Brandon Yost. Have a wonderful day, my friends. Happy stitching. The Stitch People podcast is a production of Beanski LLC and Stitch People. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.